Member of Parliament for Oropuch East, Dr. Rudal Munilal joins me. So happy to have Dr. Munilal on the program this morning so we could really uh, ventilate and indeed uh, talk about all the major, uh, major issues of the day. Um, so many different talking points and I'm happy to get your perspective. Uh, let me say welcome. Thanks for the time and great to see you. Thank you very much, Jason, for the kind invitation uh, from you and your producer and staff. And it's a, it, as I said, as Jolene would say, it's been a long time coming. So I'm happy yes, to be with you this morning. Indeed, uh, the, the sentiment is also mutual. Let me ask you, I know you had a late evening. Uh, you all went, well, could you only imagine uh, into whatever hour last evening at the parliament. Uh, the property tax scenario, page six and seven, it dominates The Guardian this morning. Sure. So I'm looking at uh, the opposition leader. She wants it to be repealed. And I'm seeing the corporations are still kind of towing the line as to what's happening because i know recently i found out over the weekend of course well we know it was at three percent then it went down to two sure uh, and i know some corporations started to calculate already some of the earnings that would have come in yes. and then obviously with the one percent reduction they recognized it was going to amount in millions sure. lost uh, where, where is the opposition as it were really on this well, the, property tax issue the opposition has been very clear on this as a policy issue extremely clear uh, for about 10 years or so now, we have taken a position that we do not support the property tax as, as, it, as it is in any form or fashion, notwithstanding um, amendments and so on. You will recall, and I'll remind your viewers and listeners, that under the partnership administration, we had actually waived the property tax for five years, and our position is that it should be repealed. Um, it, is, it is oppressive by itself. And there are inbuilt uh, inequalities, so to speak, that um, doesn't augur well, you know, for issues of social justice, issues of, um, you know, fairness and so on. And those matters have come to the fore over the last couple of years with the matter of assessment and so on. And we can get into that. But in a nutshell, our policy position has always been, and it was articulated yesterday clearly by the leader of the opposition, that we do not support the property tax and therefore we support the repealing or removing of this tax. Uh, so that whether it drops from 3% or 2%, uh, it's to us irrelevant in, in a sense that we are, we are there to dismantle and to remove the property tax. That's our fundamental policy. It is built upon a, our belief that that system as structured and designed by a former administration in 2009 is, is inherently unfair and unjust. And, um, and that's our fundamental position. Now, what has happened is that many people have been served with what is called assessment, and that has taken on a, a sort of erratic and chaotic uh, life of its own, where there, you know, what is, what is being revealed by persons, particularly elderly persons, actually, is a complete um, lack of uh, fairness, a complete lack of understanding of the assessments, the valuations, and so on. And we have numerous, uh, really numerous examples of that. So that yesterday, we put our cards on the table and indicated to the government we will not support their amendment. We support the repealing of that legislation. Um, there are many arguments, of course, uh, to be raised in it. But in a nutshell, that is our policy position. For us, it is, no, it is not sophisticated. It is not complicated. It is just we do not support that. Um, there are many ways a government can raise revenue, as we did before, uh, without taxing the population in such an oppressive uh, and harsh manner, and without such an unstructured, chaotic, and erratic system of um, assessment. As I move further, Phil, I want to thank you for your commentary there. I'm watching ACP Suzette Martin appointed new deputy top cop. Um, well, what's the, what's the position uh, in terms of that development? Well, um, this matter came to the fore last evening, late last evening, um, as is required by law. The parliament approves a nomination from the Police Service Commission. Um, we have supported several nominees over the years. In fact, the opposition uh, did support uh, Mrs. Erla Christopher as well. That's a matter of public record. Uh, on this matter, regrettably, the opposition was not able to give support. Um, we felt that uh, Ms. Suzette Martin had been named as a person who was involved in the infamous Brent Thomas matter. Now, that matter is still before the court, so I will not talk too much about it. But to indicate that that was a matter, as a matter of fact, 
a, a, a judge, a high court judge had ruled on that, where the judge and the, the, the ruling um, stated clearly that, that a citizen by the name of Brent Thomas was abducted from Barbados, uh, having been the subject of unlawful searches and the execution of uh, unlawful um, and unmerited and uh, unconstitutional and arbitrary search warrants and police procedures. Uh, Mr. Thomas proceeded to travel, and then in Barbados, I think he was he was grabbed, he was snapped up yeah, by the story. and Tobago police officers, including Ms. Suzette Martin, and we felt that Ms. Martin herself had questions to answer on that ongoing matter. But barring, uh, barring that scenario, is she qualified uh, more or less for, for this position? Or is just really that that's like, the... Like several other persons, she would have met the minimum requirements. So she is qualified to use that term. Mm. But it's not just the minimum requirements or the experience and so on. There are other matters. As a matter of public record, I think you may know that Ms. Martin is also before the court on a matter involving an accident on the priority bus route where she has been charged um, and is in the criminal court at this time. Uh, and then I raised a matter which I prefer not to raise in detail here, mm -hmm. involving some internal matters in the police service, mm -hmm. where there were also some damning reports um, concerning the, you know, concerning the, let's say, the operations of the nominee in question. Uh, I don't want to go further in that now, but in those circumstances, Jason, we felt that uh, we could not, in good conscience, support this nominee. Um, the government had another view for which they're entitled to, and I think uh, it was the motion was passed in the end. Understood. Let me ask you, because I know you're also the shadow minister, shadow national security minister, and crime, clearly it's still a major talking point. And obviously, uh, we just mentioned the TTPS, and we hope that obviously going forward, uh, they can sort themselves out, especially with the leadership part of it, because we need all hands on deck. But their role is to really enforce the laws. We are, we are considering, obviously, what's happening with folks like yourself and others in the House. Uh, there's been that call for the opposition and the government to meet on said crime talks. Obviously, it's uh, not a reality just yet. Can we, could we see that in any, uh, any time well, soon? Is that, is that something that will take place in the foreseeable future, that coming well, together? Well, to, to do this dance, you need two people to cooperate to dance. Um, uh, what has happened is the Prime Minister has an alternative view, uh, and his view is that he believes that he ought not or should not or need not participate in crime talks himself. Uh, as, as Chairman of the National Security Council and the Head of Government, we felt that he should um, participate in those talks, and those matters have been dragged out for some time now. But in a strange way, I believe events have overtaken that. The matter now is a much more concrete matter, uh, as I raised yesterday a question in Parliament to uh, Minister Fitzgerald Hines to ask, you know, what are the new strategies, policies, initiatives, programs of the National Security Ministry and, Ministry and the TTPS to deal with what you have seen over the last 72 hours or so, the gruesome and savage killing, and you're, it's coming up on your screen now. There has been a, a, a wave of savage, uh, gruesome killings uh, not only in her place, which I, I believe myself and, and you over the years visited and had a, a you know very peaceful experience and so on. Yeah, I recall and that. I recall that. So, yeah, you remember? Yes. Yeah. Throughout the country, we have been seeing this, you know, this uh, a kind of explosion of, of criminal activity in the most brutal way. And um, this requires an intervention, a policy and program intervention as an emergency measure. And yesterday, regrettably, Mr. Hines was not in a position to tell us anything new, anything we did not know before. Uh, so we believe that there is a complete breakdown of leadership in the national security sector. Um, as you know, the SSA, the Strategic Services Agency, have more or less imploded on itself in the aftermath of um, revelations and allegations, I must say, of a host of wrongdoing. Um, you know, all type of allegations have surfaced on that, but the population has absolutely no official information on what has happened there. So the intelligence community is completely, um, you know, uh, destroyed in a sense because that has implications for, for crime and gangs, uh, intelligence, and so on. The police service itself trying as they, the best they can. They have not been able to get their hands around, you know, the, the neck of this beast 
uh, and um, we are seeing it daily. And Mr. Hines has focal uh, cabinet responsibility for this. And I dare say that it appears that the government is, uh, is in hiding and living in the sky as far as crime is concerned. And it affects everyone. It affects not, you know, it affects everyone. And you, you can't identify one group and say crime will not affect that group. You cannot identify one uh, class of people, uh, whether it's employers, employees, and say it, it does not affect them. Uh, and it's a major issue. And uh, we are asking serious questions of the prime minister, whether the time has come to, to move Mr. Hines out of national security, for which he's clearly unprepared and unqualified. And, uh, and try someone else. I mean, uh, I, I don't know if anyone else may do a better job. But we have had, uh, as you know, the anti-crime uh, symposia, uh, several successful meetings in St. Joseph, in San Fernando, uh, in Sandy Grande, in Chaguanas, in which the leader of the opposition has taken it upon herself and her team to organize anti-crime uh, symposia where we have had very, very um, compelling uh, presentations by a host of experts, not only in criminology but in sociology, and, in, uh, in um, you know areas related and in that to regard, social development and so on. And in that regard, Dr. Munilal, coming out of your crime talks, what seems to be the general consensus from members of the public who attend these said crime talks? Yes, we know there are experts who will bring some of their experience and research, but more so the population. When you listen to the man and woman who take time out of their evening to come and sit in these anti-crime talks? What seems to be the general consensus and more so recommendation? Well, Jason, if, if I am to, to sort of synthesize the issues, uh, yes, there is an emotional part of that discussion. There's an there's a understandably emotional part of a discussion on crime because the relatives of victims and victims themselves will present themselves and, and give you some, some detail of their experience which is horrendous, which is, is not pleasurable. But that is an, an, a very, very um, reasonable position. It is understandable. Uh, and we have, we have listened, you know, sometimes, you know, a chill go up our spine when we hear that, uh, those stories. But however, we have been able to ascertain serious policy issues as well. In fact, we, we have had discussions, uh, pres presenters, I think the former Prime Minister of St. Lucia has spoken as well, in which issues such as the importance of community uh, comfort patrols, the importance of dealing with the service, for example, service and customer relations of the police service, where they have to build greater trust and greater understanding between community and police, between law enforcement and society. That has came across in a very, very, um, in a very sharp manner, that issue of confidence in law enforcement and the strategies to deal with that by greater involvement between law enforcement and community builders. Uh, we have had um, discussions on cybercrime, the importance of of creating a national center, an agency to deal with cybercrime. We have had discussions where another key policy issue arose as to meeting and treating with communities at risk, communities that are the fertile ground, so to speak, uh, for young uh, urban gang members and potential members of gangs. I think Professor Kojo spoke at length on that matter. We have had Mr. Gary Griffith speaking at length on policing itself, uh, on, the, on, on, on part of policing, patrolling, uh, creating, using technology for dealing with crime, uh, using intelligence as well, intelligence-driven uh, uh, policies to address crime. On the practical aspects of operations, we have had, I think, Mr. Abraham and others speak to us on, on some of the practical challenges. So we are preparing ourselves. We believe it is just a matter of time uh, as a government in waiting. We are preparing ourselves. We believe when we get there, uh, and I can tell you, Jason, and I'm not saying it, you know, just in a, in a frivolous manner or anything like that. I'm very serious. I believe that in six months of a UNC administration, we will restore law and order to Trinidad and Tobago. We will restore law and order. It, ha it is a multi-pronged approach, yes. It is not one policy, but we, are, we have to deal with it on the side of the economy as well. This crime is, in part, related to the collapse of the economy, the collapse of job creation, the collapse of you know, income redistribution, the collapse of, of, of industry. That has happened here. 
Um, uh, it has to do, of course, with the uh, infiltration of illegal firearms, which came out in the, in the anti-crime symposia. So we have to be stronger on the issue of border management and restructuring the Ministry of National Security. Uh, why it is that in eight years the government cannot procure one scanner, but they can procure eight boats that are not working, but they cannot procure one scanner. That's a very serious matter. When the police had at their disposal mobile scanners for the roads, they said that, um, what, it's not working? First, they didn't have the human resource for it. Then they didn't understand the technology. Then it uh, is not bringing results. These are issues that a government needs to drive. And I think that, um, as I said before, coming out of the anti-crime uh, symposia, a very successful round, we have policy recommendations. We have program, uh, programs that we can return to. In some cases, the, the National Operations Center, the Community Comfort Patrol. We have indicated very boldly, and we have, we have the courage to indicate that we believe that firearms should, should be placed in the hands of law-abiding citizens who wish to defend themselves against criminal elements. Once they qualify, they should have access to the, the right weapons and so on to defend themselves in the state where the government has proven unable under Dr. Rowley and others to, def to defend the citizens. So when we put all of that, uh, you know, policy uh, programs together, that is, that is a compelling uh, option, uh, group of options that we have to attack crime. And this is why I'm saying that the United National Congress will return law and order to Trinidad and Tobago. And I have said before, I mean, and I, I, I can say it, I think within six months, you will see uh, a serious uh, dent in the murder rate and the, the rate of serious crimes. I believe we have the police as well. The police are hardworking. Many police officers are hardworking, diligent, capable of doing more. They need the resources. They need the support from a government. They need the motivation as well. They need their minister or prime minister and so on, in a way to be on the ground with them working, supporting. Uh, this is not happening now. You need to manage crime almost, uh, uh, to tell you something, almost on an hourly basis if you are to make a dent. Me, and there are many, many other strategies that arise um, let me, let me in ask. that anti-crime symposium. Let me ask, before we wrap things up, uh, would the multi-prong approach uh, to bring in some kind of solution to crime um, be part of, of the campaign strategy? I mean, obviously, we know that Definitely, by 2025, it could happen this year. We don't know. But elections clearly are around the corner. Is the machinery already well-oiled and ready to go? Uh, what's the plan going forward for the next well, general election? Well, could I say that there have been two elections, two... Uh, well, I mean, I want to... Before I forget, I want to wish all the children right in the SEA um, uh, all success and our prayers are with those kids to do well as they, as they must. Um, and I wish them all success in the coming uh, Thursday for the SEA. But I use the analogy, we have had two trials or two tests before. Quite recently, as you know, there have been a local government election in which the United National Congress got seven boroughs and councils and the PNM got seven, but the UNC got the majority of the votes clearly. There has been an election in the THA in which the PNM was wiped out in a sense in Tobago. So that the, the, the signs are there, you know, the, the signs are there that the, the current government, the incumbent government, has collapsed in Tobago, has collapsed in Trinidad. So we are confident, but we are not overconfident. There's enormous amount of work to be done. We are working all the time. Uh, you can sense a certain intensity in the opposition party. And we are working, we are building the foundations. We are encouraging the society to unite, to come together. We have to, we, our country is at a crossroads. We have to save this country. This country is worthy of saving. We have, all of us, would like to see our country prosper with peace, with stability. Uh, with uh, great economic growth and prosperity for all. And that is our vision. We are prepared. We have the human resources. We certainly have the policy and the programs. We have now the experience. I want to remind you, 
that many of us in the opposition, including the opposition leader, myself and others, we have the experience of being in government before. So it will not take us long to settle in and bring the change that this country requires urgently to deal not only with crime, but with economic collapse, with the, the social problems we face, uh, with the problems in health and education. On Friday, we will speak on health, I believe, in the parliament, and um, you'll hear more of that. So that we are prepared, we are not overconfident, certainly. Um, a lot of work to be done, but the recent um, mock exams, so to speak, if you, if you can say that, the recent tests suggest that we are on the right course, and um, it is a question of time now. And whenever the Prime Minister will choose to call the elections, we are confident, confident that we will return to office to, to save this country, really, to rescue. It's a rescue operation that is required, and we need to rescue this country. This country uh, belongs to all of us, and we cannot have this country being destroyed uh, and decimated in the manner that it is now. Dr. Munilal, I want to thank you for your time this morning for coming on to speak about the issue of the day or some of the, the burning topics of the day. And Thank hopefully you very we'll much for the invitation. To, yes. uh, all love to you and to the crew and yeah. to your listeners and viewers. God bless. Hopefully we get a chance to do it again soon. All the best. Thank you very much. Dr. Munilal Oropuch, East Member of Parliament, touching base with us, Opposition MP, on the morning brew. Let's take a break. We come back. Now the MP would have mentioned, Dr. Munilal mentioned, SEA around the corner. That's right. Two days away. So let's talk about overcoming SEA stress as we uh, welcome, after the break, a psychologist who will touch on that said issue, and we also touch on dealing with SEA anxiety. Kelly McFarlane, psychologist, joins me next.